Okay, so the last time we left off, uh, we were looking at extended Veblen functions. Um, these were things like phi 1, 0, 0, 0, for instance. Uh, so we had a way of denoting very large ordinals. The only problem was they're difficult to diagonalize. So in order to go further, uh, we have to kind of denote things like this in a single function. And the way we do that is with infinite collapsing functions. Now, infinite collapsing functions are a little bit abstract. We have to set a few things up before we can even start. So uh, bear with me. First thing we need to do is construct a set S. Now, this uh, set S is kind of like our toolbox. And with our toolbox, we're going to construct additional sets. So set S contains 0, 1, uh, omega, the first infinite ordinal we dealt with, and something called capital omega. Now, uh, capital omega is a little bit strange in that it has a very loose uh, definition. It's basically defined as a very, very large ordinal, uh, something larger than anything we're going to need, basically. So um, the looseness of this definition will become clearer as we go on. So just keep that in mind for now. Now we move on to a new set called uh, C0. So this will be a part of a whole family of sets. And this is the first, um, uh, first iteration of it. So C of 0. And this is uh, everything that's closed under addition, multiplication, and exponentiation of the set S. So all that means is we can take any combination of these uh, terms here. And we can add them together, multiply them together, or exponentiate them. But we just can't do an infinite amount of that operation, basically. So we can have things like uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the natural numbers. Uh, we can have omega plus 1, omega times 2, omega to the omega. We can use this guy here and do capital omega plus 1, capital omega times 2, capital omega to the capital omega, blah, 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 and everything in between. So we can have a whole bunch of, um, of uh, different terms in here. The only thing we can't do is uh, do each operation an infinite number of times. So now we ask the question, what is the first infinite ordinal we reach that's inaccessible from this set C0? So let's take a look at it. Let's see. Um, what if we do the um, addition operation on the number 1 an infinite number of times? Just go 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 uh, off into infinity. This should be prohibited because we're not allowed to do an infinite number of operations. But if you look at it, uh, really that just equals infinity. And we have infinity right here. That's uh, defined as our infinity of the natural numbers. So we could just plop this one right down in from s into c or whatever so let's just plop it down in here and that's allowed so what if we take this and just do uh, omega plus one plus one plus one plus one and do the same kind of thing well that just equals omega two and that's still allowed because we could technically just take this uh, omega down and then uh, make two sets of um, infinity basically so that's allowed what about omega times omega times omega times omega times omega off into infinity well that's just omega to the power of omega that's still allowed so as it turns out, the first um, inaccessible one is when we go omega to the power of omega to the power of omega to the power of omega and make an infinite tower of omegas. Because if you look at it, there's nothing that we can do in here um, it, with a finite number of operations to reach that. So our first inaccessible ordinal from C0 is an infinite tower of omegas. And we know that to be epsilon naught. So how we define this, uh, this uh, point is with psi. Now psi is our infinite collapsing function. That's how it's uh, defined. It's defined as psi. And we call psi 0 the uh, inaccessible point of C0. So this, as we said, is the infinite tower of omegas, which is equal to epsilon naught. So now as we move on, we're going to construct a new set called C1. Now this C1 is going to contain C0 everything in it, as well as operations of uh, addition, multiplication, and exponentiation of our new epsilon naught here. So now we can have things like epsilon naught plus 1, epsilon naught times 2, epsilon naught to the epsilon naught, blah, blah, blah. Any possible combination of these terms, we just can't have an infinite number of them. Now we're going to define a new psi 1 this time to correspond to this set. And now this one is going to be the inaccessible point from this one. So when do we run out of uh, power here? When do we have to do an infinite number of, uh, of uh, terms here? And as it turns out, this equates to an infinite tower of epsilon naughts, which we know is equal to uh, epsilon 1. 
And in a previous video, I, I, uh, I showed why an infinite tower of epsilon naughts is the same as the, the classical definition of um, epsilon one, which is an infinite tower of omegas with epsilon naught plus one on top. So I hope you guys uh, remember that. So an infinite tower of, of epsilon naughts is equal to epsilon one. So we can write epsilon one down in here. This is the, the point where you need an infinite number of operations to reach. And this keeps on going like this. We can uh, construct a new set, C2, that contains all of C1 in addition to uh, operations of epsilon 1. So again, we can just keep on doing this. Whatever. I'll use a different example just to show that it's um, these aren't the only elements in here. These are just examples of, of possible elements. So let's do like epsilon uh, 1 times 5 or something, whatever. And then epsilon 1 to the epsilon 1, blah, blah, blah. Any finite construction. Again, the first uh, infinite construction would be an infinite tower of epsilon 1s which is equal to epsilon 2. So we would define our uh, psi 2 here as epsilon 2. So you might be noticing something here. This uh, psi function seems to be like an epsilon building function. Whatever we plug into here, we get the corresponding epsilon number. So in general, we can say that psi of a is equal to epsilon a. Now we have to be careful though because this only works up to a certain point. Now I'm going to skip ahead, um, or before I do, I'll, I'll just say that you can insert some infinite ordinals in here too. We can do stuff like uh, psi of omega is equal to epsilon to the omega. Psi to the epsilon naught would be epsilon, epsilon naught. So we can do things like that as well. But let's say we keep on going and going and going for a very long time, and we uh, start constructing uh, sets of C, like uh, C of zeta naught, for instance. Well, what would this be? Well, think of um, back here, C0 was everything up to, but not including epsilon naught. So in the same manner, uh, C of zeta naught would be everything up to, but uh, not including. So I'll just put not including zeta naught. So what if we wanted to get to zeta naught? What if we went the next step there and said, well, what, um, is the first infinite ordinal is inaccessible from uh, C as zeta naught. So we would think we could do this and then just keep on continuing on making bigger and bigger ordinals. But what do you need to do in order to get zeta naught from this function? Well, zeta naught is, is defined as an infinite nesting of epsilons, right? So in order to get an infinite nesting of epsilons, you'd need to plug in an infinite nesting into here and then in order to get that, you'd have to still plug in infinite nesting, infinite nesting, infinite nesting, and you have to keep on going back and back and back trying to create this ordinal, and you can never quite get there. You can never plug in enough epsilons to get this zeta naught. And as it turns out, no matter what you plug into this function, if it's zeta naught or bigger, you're just gonna get zeta naught out of this. So this function is essentially stuck at zeta naught. Now this might seem a little bit silly because um, we're trying to create gigantic ordinals and we're already stuck at zeta naught. And zeta naught is something that we've uh, visited before. It's something that we've gotten to uh, very easily and a, a long time ago, quite a few videos ago. So it seems strange that it gets stuck. But this is a very, very important property of infinite collapsing functions. And it has something to do with this uh, capital omega right here. So in the next video, I'll explain how we can get out of this trap using our uh, capital omega.